Jumptron. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm calling about the Thanksgiving turkey I ordered this season. Yeah, well, the first of many problems is it doesn't appear to be a turkey at all. Man, this thing's still alive and kicking. All right, it was walking around doing its business like it's got a report to file on Monday. No, no, you be careful with that. Well, that's my priceless, vaguely adult Macaulay Culkin head bust. Oh, that's just wonderful. And what exactly am I supposed to worship now? Yeah, I, I don't know what you expect me to do. Deal with this myself? I can't deal with something myself. Come on, this is America. Yeah, of course I got the brick. What are you talking about? Oh. Dine with me, newfound horse friend. Oh, what? You don't like it? Huh? Come on, there are starving equine out there this Thanksgiving. Uh, you should know better, really. I don't know how I feel about this beast. Quiet, you. You're just jealous as a new cute critter in the house, all right? And I ain't talking about myself. Uh, definitely not objectively. I was rated number one ugliest man in the privacy of his own house by what is the point of this magazine? What a blessed Thanksgiving. Oh my God, there's a horse in my house! Maybe Thanksgiving is a little gruesome after all. I think we need something to wash over these hard facts of life with. You know, like a big old clown. What slaughterhouses? Look at the clown, look at the Hamburglar. He stole the chicken nuggets, ha <laughs> ha. It always comes back to entertainment. Since the dawn of time, companies have been trying to find the most insidious of ways to get in between your brain's folds. To lay an idea that'll hatch one day. An idea you probably thought was yours. But actually it was this guy's. Well, you really want this guy coming up with your ideas? He looks like he owns slaves. So that's why when video games hit the scene in the early 80s, companies were all over it. Just shelling out money indiscriminately to plaster their mugs all over the place, wherever they could. Oh my god, so greedy, so soulless. It stands to taint the holiday. Eh, but really, come on. Thanksgiving is about being thankful and grateful for all the wonderful amenities we have in the U.S. of A. And at the end of the day, what's more American than food, entertainment, and commercialism? All rolled right into one tight package. It's beautiful. One of the earliest examples of advertising in games is Burger King's very own Whopper Chase for C64. That's right, a full 19 years before the king creeped out the world by storm. Strangely, this game is Spain only. It was also programmed by Jesus. Many a long workday was had by Jesus. You could hear him typing away, typing away in his Nazareth mud hut. It stars you as the Whopper, shooting your leftover mayonnaise supply out at various creeps that I can only assume want to take a bite out of you because you're so goddamn delicious. Why is the chef an enemy here? A little late, dude. Throwing knives isn't gonna do much now. What are these things? Is that a pickle? Is that a tomato or apple? What reason would they have to attack me? There's not much to this game, and it certainly doesn't make me want to buy a Whopper. Nice try, guys, but I'm not that easily fooled. Some companies even tried to package the game with the product. Probably the most famous example being Chex Quest, a Doom clone involving green goo and a television remote control. Good job on this one, guys. Okay, but let's cut the crap and be honest. We're all really here for the 53 hours of America Online! That's the real shit, baby! Give it to me! And of course, we can't forget the second greatest serial hit. Captain Crunch's Crunchling Adventure. I don't know about this guy, Captain Crunch. He doesn't strike me as being a very responsible person, putting grody ass CDs in children's cereal. And come on, this guy's always bursting through walls and shit. Who's gonna pay for that? What are you the captain of? What's your rank? Uh, captain, be careful, you're gonna hit somebody. It's a disguise. It's Sean Le <laughs> Hi, before we get started, you need to choose the Crunchling you will raise and train. Yes, Captain. Which one of these mighty strong slave creatures should I purchase with my sack of crunch shekels? Which one will scream the least when I bite his succulent head? On the next screen, you'll give your crunchling a name. You want me to name it? Well, I don't want to get too attached to the poor thing. Just put his name as non-applicable. Blast him with some colored piss and we'll be on our way. You're gonna raise the best crunchling athlete ever! Crunchlings need lots of praise, as well as plenty of Cap'n Crunch cereal! Oh uh, yeah, lots of Cap'n Crunch to keep their bones from developing. You wouldn't want them to be, you know, quick, too quick and nimble so they could escape this literal dungeon you keep them in. Uh, okay, let's see here. What do I pull on this? That's all you do? You just feed him Cap'n Crunch that falls from the ceiling when you pull a lever? What is this, a Quaker Oats wet dream?
This game is really weird. You're just the caretaker of this crunchling monster. It's got a food and happiness meter, which you can raise by feeding it one of three types of Captain Crunch cereal. And tickling it? I'm not sure what the end goal is here. I assume to train it for a gladiatorial crunchling event where it will attempt to bathe in the blood of its rivals, uh, as seen here by the three training stats of speed, jumping, and strength. In the first minigame, you throw rocks at other rocks while a dinosaur in the background perpetually forgets why it's standing there. Wow, this is a lot of hard work. I wonder how much training we got out of that. Hmm, hold on, let me just see here. Let's just get a little closer. That's all the progress I made? That tiny Tim of a goddamn tick? Walking around on crutches and shit about to expire an early death from polio? How many times am I expected to play that minigame to level the stat up? You'd better win a lifetime supply of Cap'n Crunch for beating this. Anything could happen in this crazy place, but it always happens backwards. You're going to race against this turtle on your skateboard. What talk of madness is this? Wow, truly crazy place. It's so crazy it even has a roller coaster in the background. This game is complete bullshit. You're supposed to beat the turtle, but he's just like the most immaculate racer of all time. If you hit anything, even one thing, you can't recover. So what, I mess up once, the turtle's fucking gone? He's just out of there. What can I say? The captain, he expects perfection. That's nice, captain. But oh, that time you fucked up and your cereal was just all berries? Huh? I still bought that shit. I didn't criticize you for it, you even gave it a sarcastic name. How soon we forget. Also, for some reason, there's a Gatorade ad inside this ad, very effective. But not all companies were so sneaky about this. Some tried to sell you their own advertising outright. Take, for example, Yoshinoya for PS2. Is this a video game or the restaurant's smallest branch? Yes, I'd like one beef bowl and a small Coke, please! I would have ordered large, but I am to believe you do not carry that size here. It's a Japan-only game, and the goal is to play as a minimum wage worker at a Yoshinoya beef bowl branch. Really? Couldn't I have at least been the boss? How is this even supposed to make me want to buy more Yoshinoya? The game's not even free, you have to buy it! Mash Square to pay off your student loans! Now those are all great, but I'm sure what all you want to see is how a true titan of a company would market their game. And you will not be disappointed. Oh yeah, I'm talking clowns! Okay, clowns everywhere! I've got to say, I don't know how they've gotten away with using a clown as their mascot for so long. Because Ronald McDonald does not make me want to eat a hamburger. He makes me want to call the police. Come on. Ain't you hungry? Ain't you hungry yet? First, let's look at Mick Kids for the NES. Huh. Is it Mick Kids or MC Kids? This is the 80s, anything was possible. The game starts off with two kids reading a story in a tent. Ronald? Ugh, what's going on with you, dude? You need a haircut or something? A facelift? Uh, something's off with you. Go get it fixed, please. Was showing off his magic bag at a picnic in the meadow when all of a sudden... I don't think you have to finish this story. I have a feeling I already know how it ends. Ronald, come on! Tuck away the magic bag back in your pants, all right? Nobody needs to see that. Take your meds. Help, help. The Hamburglar has run off with my magic bag. Please help us get it back. Well, fuck, get it yourself, you creep. Well, would you look at yourself? You're a hunched over grown man clown asking a child to help you get your bag back. Back off! Search the levels of my clubhouse and retrieve at least four of my puzzle cards. Ronald, what are you, 46? You can't go around telling kids to scavenge through your clubhouse. This game is now promoting children helping strangers and then going into said strangers' private abode for the promise of a trade of a tasty hamburger. I don't see anything wrong with that if you don't. If you come back to my house with four cards, I will show you how to get to Birdie's house. Is Birdie one of your backroom girls, Ronald? And when's the last time she's seen her parents, huh? You're a sick, twisted clown. It's so bizarre, isn't it, that games used to be used for marketing purposes like this? It fell out of style because it clearly doesn't work. It's too, I don't know, heavy-handed. I mean, get real already. We're not sheep. I mean, it's not as if this game would make me want to order a delicious McDonald's hamburger which has the perfect blend of crispy lettuce, meaty tomatoes, a patty sizzled to perfection, and all topped off with one perfectly crunchy pickle. Well, that's ridiculous. I'm two steps ahead of you, McDonald's. All right, your mind games aren't going to work on me. Hey, can you pass the ketchup? <laughs> you can't have a burger without ketchup. Okay, first level, Ronald's Clubhouse, the clubhouse. Might want to work on that name. This one is a direct ripoff of Mario World in terms of its assets and structure, but not so much the gameplay itself. That's pretty weird considering this was a high-profile commercial production. 
Okay, beat that level. Got that one. Got that one. And we're good. Moving on. Huh. What's going on? I can't seem to move on to the next world. Is this all there is? Oh, that's right. I gotta get Ronald's dirty cards to advance. But I can't find them. Shouldn't they be easier to find, given that this is the first level? What about this one up here? I don't know how I'm supposed to get it. Am I supposed to throw a block at it? No, that didn't do it. Huh, maybe if I stack this block here and... Okay, I'll go get another one. Bring it back. Oh, okay. The other one's gone. Whatever, this game sucks. Whoa! What is that about? I touch one benign thing in the level, it sends me all the way back? I could have gone out and bought another game in the time it took that to transpire. Then we have Mick and Mac Global Gladiators for the Sega Genesis. Other than the random golden arches pasted everywhere, I'm not really sure about the relation to McDonald's on this one. Are you, are you, are you ready? Yeah! That's a hell of a soundtrack to start us off. So, as always, the scene is set at the local McDonald's branch. Two kids, who I'm assuming are Mick and Mac, respectively, are seated at the table reading about what they call Global Gladiators, who apparently they want to become. Yeah, being a gladiator would be a blast! Are you ready? I'm not sure, actually. Awesome. I feel like you're putting words in my mouth. Yeah! Oh, so you admit it. Hey guys, if you're looking for a blast, how about this? Ouch. What have you done, Ron? They were but children! You're gonna throw these kids into a gladiator world because what, they were thinking about it? Every kid says he wants to be an astronaut, what are you gonna do, throw him into space? You know, I could have bought ten of these, Ronald, but I only went with four because I'm not supporting your reckless habits. Okay, turns out I bought fifteen. But my point is, you're a real monster. I don't agree with your ethics. Like I said, the only McDonald's branding on the whole thing is just the M in the corner. McDonald's corporate must have just really liked this game. Also, the game is very enthused to be paused. <laughs> what a sound effect. The gameplay on this is actually way cooler than you'd expect. If you took the McDonald's branding off it, you'd have a legitimate game here. Okay, another one for Genesis. What am I even looking at here? McDonald's Treasureland Adventure. Weird. That's some batshit fruity shit there. I wasn't even aware Ronald McDonald had magic. This is official? It looks like a ROM hack. Ugh, it's so wrong. Hey, maybe you could have saved up some of that fairy dust to help cure all the early onset type 2 diabetes you helped create. Yes, eat McDonald. Am real human. Am not faceless robot corporation. Am have real feelings too. Okay, one last McDonald's game to show you. Donald, no magical world for Game Gear. Ronald is always cheerful and happy. Oh, is that what that emotion is? But a strange incident happened one day. It all started when Grimace found a strange looking box. I'm surprised Grimace got out of bed this day. He's looking pretty checked out. When did you find that box, asks Ronald. The deadness on his eyes, piercing Grimace's heart. It's going to explode, isn't it? First off, Grimace, a bit late there. Ow, get out of my face! You're inviting me to enjoy the magical world? But what if I don't want to? Can you find the exit? Have a nice trip! What are you, Jigsaw? There's not even for sure an exit in there? Yeah, good luck finding your way out! Hope there's not too much broken glass in there! What's with this trend of McDonald's games and people being thrown into magical worlds against their will? It's sadistic! Perhaps it's an allegory for our own lack of ability to resist the tasty confections of our fast food overlords. Our biological drive to endlessly dine on the sultry and salty goodness of a perfectly cooked burger. Well, I think we're more than that, personally. I mean, we have more than just a base drive as a species. I mean, I'd like to think of us as a, a dignified and... <sighs> food. Need more food. Grimbo, bring me more food. Johnny is hungry. Johnny is hungry. <coughs> Obey, Grimbo. Obey. Okay, let's talk about my It's so good. It comes to my character. Bad Grimbo. No curses, Grimbo. Go get filet of fish. Get filet of fish. Go get it. Good. Good Grimbo. Grimbo lives another day. <laughs> Wait, what happened? 
feel like I blacked out for some time there. What is this, food? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Could be. This episode was sponsored by the awesome people at Crunchyroll. Crunchyroll is a true-to-life premium anime streaming experience. You can't get better. Ad-free, 1080p, professionally subtitled, and episodes going up as soon as one hour after they air in Japan. Hot damn, that's fast. Please do yourselves a favor and go to crunchyroll.com slash jontron or just click the link in the description to grab your free 30-day trial now. Come on, that translates to like 30 days of Mobile Suit Gundam Iron-Blooded Orphans. Well, let me tell you, those are some orphans you don't want to f*** with. I'm scared of those orphans! So, I hope you all enjoy Crunchyroll as much as I do. See ya, and thanks for watching.